my friends, and welcome to Quartet. So nice to have you with us today. We're coming to you, as we always are, from Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, where the Arlington Institute holds for us here in the Appalachian Mountains. And we are joined for our conversation of things significant and insightful and provocative related to the big change that's happening in this world. By Kingsley Dennis. Hi, Kingsley. How are you? Hello, John, my friend. Good to be back. Hello, Penny. And thanks to everybody who's tuned in to watch. Yeah. And Penny Kelly. Hi, Penny. Hi there. It's good to be here. Hi, Kingsley. Sadly, Greg Braden is traveling. And so he can't join us from wherever your form of transportation he's using. So, uh, the three of us are going to hold forth here today on a very interesting subject about what are we supposed to be doing in the next two years if the whole world is going sideways, like we talked about last time in the last episode. So let's uh, check in and say what's on your mind. What have you been thinking about, Penny? Um, I actually have been thinking about two or three things. One, watching the antics of what's happening around the primaries and that whole who's on the ballot and who's not on the ballot and 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 thinking how silly we look to the rest of the world. It's like, oh, wow. OK. And hoping it's not too banana like banana republic like. <laughs> so, um the other thing that I have been watching is the attempts to prime the pump for a new pandemic. And nobody's nobody's buying it. Nobody's paying attention to it. Nobody's like, yeah, yeah, I've been there, done that. So watching that and um, I think I think those are both like distractions for something else. I'm not sure what, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting, the whole uh, what, virus X or whatever they're calling the thing. Uh, some, they're worried. Yeah. It's, it doesn't seem to be uh, getting much traction. Kingsley. Well, actually, I, it, may be, it may sound quite personal, but I, what's been on my mind is, is the feeling of gratitude. Um, not only from, I mean, I have people I know who are in worse circumstances, health-wise and life-wise, and I think many people can relate to that. But also, um, you know, since what we talked about last time, all that's going on in the world, it's an incredible time to be here. Despite the insecurities, I think it's an important time to be here and to be able to witness this this phase in history um, and to, to be in the position that I have, and I feel great gratitude, and I think I've been feeling that especially since the beginning of this year, and I think that's going to tie into our talk today, is that it really is bringing it home where we are situated right now in, in, in personal and world history. So that's what one thing I feel. And uh, and just a second thing I want to say is that I realised that in our last talk, I made a bit of a blunder. I referred to, uh, to uh, Bobby or Robert Kennedy Jr. as JFK Jr., I know a couple of people have picked that up and and were thinking was I was I alluding to some kind of conspiracy around JFK Jr. did not die in a plane crash but was on a Caribbean island is it going to come back? Um, I wasn't referring to that, uh, but not not consciously. Um, so that was a little slip up in uh, political uh, uh, abbreviated initials. So I did mean Bobby Jr. Indeed, yep. Thanks. <laughs> well, thanks for clearing that up. We were all wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you meant, Kingsley. And yeah, we, we, my I brain was... knows what I mean. It just depends yeah. how it comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So it's time for questions. And we appreciate your comments, those of you who send them in. Uh, we read them all and uh, seriously uh, consider them all. And then uh, we get a chance here to run around the circle and see what everybody has to say. Let's start with uh, Cynthia Larson says, given that we exist within evolving consciousnesses, how best can we foster self-organizing sanity on an individual basis that can flourish to become greater 
than any inferior agenda, scheme, or plan. Who wants to take that one? Go ahead, Kingsley. Well, I'll tackle that first, having uh, talked about systems uh, in the last quartet. Um, in any system, uh, you have what you call the attractor hub, the resonant attractor. And that works on a physical level and a chemical level and a biological level, which is, again, a frequency level. So really, I would say if you want to be uh, a kind of a point of, of order within a self-organizing system, especially in criticality, is to be a kind of resonant hub, a resonant attractor. That is, find your stability, your stable frequency, find the 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 state that you want to operate on and your to give it a term your vibratory signature can become like a resonant attractor and attract others towards you because all systems have hubs within the in the network and some of these you know some of these hubs can be dissonant attractors so it's necessary to be a resonant attractor which means find your ground find your balance and to keep your frequency around you. And that will pull in influences within this uh, self-organizing system, I would say. I would add to that a little bit as well. Um, I think that you have to go inside the self. We each have to do that kind of work. Um, I saw this quote <laughs> earlier this week, and it, it just struck me, and it was something like, most people will do anything they can to achieve spiritual high levels of spiritual consciousness, except work for it. And <laughs> I think that's really where we're at. We have to work for it. And that's actually going inside. You have to ask yourself questions. You have to notice what upsets you, what gets you all in a tizzy, what is it that you really hope will happen and, and then ask yourself questions around that. And as you answer those questions, examine those answers and ask, are they working? Is it working for you? Are you finding what Kingsley calls that point of stability within? If you're not, if you're still being triggered, you haven't gotten to the root of the issue. So That's good. Thank you. So let's go to our topic to, for the today. Uh, we got some interesting responses, some you heard, just heard of, and questions from our last uh, two weeks ago, our uh, uh, episode. And uh, we what we talked about was uh, well, what was coming downstream in uh, 2024. What was the big stuff that was uh, coming this way? And uh, if you haven't seen that, we'd encourage you to take a look at that because now we're going to ask the question and say so in the face of all of those changes. And we certainly surfaced a whole lot of them. Uh, what are you going to do? How do you prepare yourself? How do you go forward into all of the, in all this space? And since there's only three of us, we're going to uh, uh, kind of move quickly on this and uh, we'll have a little slightly abbreviated session today, but let's start with you, Penny, and say, what do you think? I think we'd, we're going to have to go back to some depth. Um, it's hard to find depth on the internet. I know we're trying to provide it here with, with Quartet, um, and people seem to appreciate that depth, but it's not easy to find elsewhere. Um, and so I think reading, we need to go back to reading or go forward into reading more in order to get the richness of perception and the richness of ideas and um, all kinds of things that bring options our way. Lots and lots of options. So one of the things, it's kind of vague for some people don't like to read, but reading, I think, is one thing. I have another couple of things on my list. Another one is listening. What should we be doing as we move through the next two years is listening very carefully to who's talking, what are they saying, and thinking about what's the long-term effect of that. Where does that take us? Um, and so that whole process of listening is really uh, a lot of people have gotten away from that. 
Um, I think another thing that we really ought to be doing, and this might be non-negotiable, is preparing for um, self-sufficiency, needing to take responsibility for what we're doing, how we're living, who's feeding us, who's providing what. I think we're moving beyond the idea of of Papa will take care of you or Uncle, Uncle Sam. Government is really about managing military and and maybe printing money and relationships with other places around the globe. Not, you know, deciding what you should eat and how you should drive or what you should drive and all of that stuff. That's way overstepping the bounds of government. And yet people have gotten comfortable with that idea that, oh, they're taking care of us. Well, you know, I have chickens and I've had cows and geese and goats and and all kinds of animals. Um, What do I do? I take care of them. I feed them. I, you know, get the vet when there's a problem medically and so on and so forth. Why can't people see that if you allow that that kind of treatment, you just become like a farm animal? And you often see in the news or hear or read the term, the herd is going this way, or we need to shift the herd that way. You know, wake up. (laughs) Why are we being referred to as the herd? Uh, There is some pretty ugly reason behind that. I won't go into that. But if we don't start taking responsibility for ourselves, then that the self-sufficiency we need is going to leave us dependent on a system that is no longer trustworthy, that isn't working, that isn't secure, and that isn't honorable. And then we can't evolve. We are not done growing up and evolving to our full human potential. Uh, I was happy to hear you say that, uh, you know, we should be reading in the future, which I always support. Uh, And I would support book reading rather than digital reading, if possible, Uh, because not too much screen time, please, because, you know, screen time, uh, you know, I know we're talking on the screen is quite kind of uh, paradoxical, but, you know, manage manage more your digital screen time, uh, definitely, but read good old paper books um yeah well you know what i'm going to say is very similar to you penny because i think this is the crux i mean i don't know we're not going to talk about prepper type of stuff because you can find that anywhere and then you know you can find that information if you wish to what i think is really critical now is to understand our human condition and to bring things back home because we've been outsourcing for so long especially in this you know, in the last few decades of our consumerist societies, and we've, we've lost the ability to insource, bring it back home. So I think, you know, that there's two, you know, I, two states, really, the state of alertness and the state of preparation. And I think we started talking about the state of alertness in our last episode, talking about, you know, what could be coming down the line. But in the type of, let's say, our inner alertness, um, the Eastern Orthodox tradition have a have a term which they call um, prelest, and that means a kind of spiritual delusion and unawareness. Ooh. And I think that's going on a lot right now. And also, they um, one way to look at that is is to see it as a a wounding of human nature through falsehood. And I think that characterizes the time we're going through, a wounding of human nature through falsehood. And we are being wounded. And there's a lot of falsehood going around. And I think we need to really understand that whilst this situation we're in in the world has a lot of physical material manifestations, it principally comes going to come down to a spiritual situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to say it's a spiritual war or a spiritual battle because I don't want to use that vocabulary, which also automatically brings in energies with it but it's a spiritual situation so i would say people need to i would say not need to i mean my this is only my opinion for myself people might be better off from coming to terms of finding uh 
their source of contact. Let's say, find your God, whoever, whatever your God is, or whatever is your spiritual source, whatever is your inner source, come to terms with that and try to find a connection with it. Because mm. there's going to be a great amount of continuing falsehood, spiritual delusion and unawareness in the next couple of years, especially. So find your connection there. And in terms of a, a state of um, preparation, there's another term which I'm, I'm using from the Eastern Orthodox Church uh, tradition, rather, called ascesis. And that means self-discipline. Self-discipline in terms of you know, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and physically. And I think self-discipline is necessary because I'm reminded of that uh, a quote from, it's, it's quite a famous quote from the poem If by Rudyard Kipling, where he says, um, you know, if you can keep your head while all those around you are losing their, theirs, yours is the world, my son. And I think that's the case in point that right now we have to start keeping our heads because, you know, there's a lot of situations and a lot of different people and, and groups perhaps potentially losing theirs. So I think self, self-discipline self is necessary. And that means um, moderation. I'm not I'm not being anesthetic, saying you have to be a hermit and and you know go on a on a on a kind of you know uh fast and that, but a moderate be moderate in these times ahead and self-discipline because mentally and emotionally we can keep our state because when we get drawn into these mental or emotional extremes, that immediately you lose your energy equilibrium and your harmony. Also, physically, if we're going to extremes, and I think you mentioned this also, Penny, we need certain resources around us. If we go into a physical extreme and have ill health, then we we may need to rely on institution, some health. And we know the health institutions are in a dire situation right now, and we don't need to be in that situation of dependency. So I would say that self-discipline can help us to create our independence, and that's important. Um, so, um, I mean, f- just for example, if you do have debts or mortgages, that's a financial dependency. It may not be easy to get rid of them, but try anything to have um, physical material independence, i.e. no debts or being being tied into external institutions. And have also mental and emotional independence, so whereby you can be self-sufficient. You want to relate to other people and be with them, but you're not dependent or under their thumb in these external sources. Um, another thing I would say is is draw your lines, know your limits, because you know if you get to a point and you haven't made your choice, then you're going to find yourself quavering maybe i mean know now your lines like i'm not going to do this in the future if if some external authority puts this law forward or tries to bring it forward i'm not going there that's a line i won't cross so know your lines and know where you won't cross because that brings you a kind of inner certitude so if it comes to that if it comes to that you're not in turmoil because you've already drawn your lines internally you know your limits and your certitude uh the way i'd approach it is uh uh, uh, essentially anchored on that basic idea of independence and uh, uh, colored by the whole idea of that we need to become new humans we need expanded awareness in this process uh if you're going into a period of a, a great uncertainty and chaos and big change then uh, you've got to have uh, a different idea about who you are, a different idea about how the world works than where you came from. Because where you came from and your perspective and your paradigm, for that matter, uh, was good for the past. It's not good for this future. And so what this is all about is expanding awareness. And it just expands awareness about who you are and expands awareness about how the larger reality works because it then uh and as penny says you've got to be very sensitive to the new messages that are coming in and to, to the things because this new world is all about ideas 
It's all about new ideas. The way to get through this space is a is a new way, and that new way is built upon new perspectives and new ideas. And so you have to hear them, and you got to be uh, open to wherever they uh, where they come from. Uh, and and the whole idea of independence uh, again, this has got a bit of a kind of a Maslow hierarchy kind of uh, color to it which says that uh, that you really need to take care of the stuff uh, at the base of the pyramid uh, in order to be able to go dealing with uh, some of the more esoteric and spiritual kinds of things. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing back here in Berkeley Springs, and that is that uh, I think that uh, uh, building a community, uh, a, a, a focused community, uh, not only you know, people who like each other and get together regularly, but who are focused on this change and this what's coming ahead is really quite important because it's hard to deal with these kinds of uncertainties uh, on your own. It's much easier to do it if you've got uh, uh, supportive people around you who you love uh, that will uh, uh, share in the responsibilities and, you know, and, and be part of the solution set if you will, for the, for the whole thing. And so you really need to do that. I mean, here we're got a community garden. We got a, almost a dozen people working together on a, so that we have food independence and uh, you know, we're working on communications independence and any, any of a number of other, other kind of things. I mean, we're just getting started on, it, but uh, it's a, it's a serious kind of aspect of the whole thing. Along the line of what Kingsley was talking about is that that there are some new characteristics that we need to develop. This new human, for instance, uh, uh, anybody that you talk to who thinks about this says uh, at the core of what these new capabilities or tools are, are, uh, are in an expanded, uh, sophisticated, uh, very sensitive kind of sense of intuition that gives you the ability to uh, find the answers to unusual and, uh, uh, you know, issues and questions that present themselves and where you have no, none of the kind of the linear uh, kind of information base that you otherwise would have. I think um, in terms of, of, the World Cup or the the World World Series, um, I I think that the new world that we will end up manifesting is going to come out of exactly that kind of thinking and pushing and asking. You go inside. What happens? And this is not really well understood. Um, by anybody at this point, when you go inside and you keep holding a particular vision of yourself, when you work to handle something that's really irritating in a way that is kind and generous and practical and you're not groveling and you're not pounding, you, you know, you've got this balance. Um, when you try to heal yourself, all of those kinds of, of internal things result in the taking in of a different kind of light that begins to restructure the entire body. And even though it looks like you have a physical body, it's not really flat anymore it's it's light and it's a whole and it responds it responds um instantly to everything and that teaches you more watch what you're thinking watch what you're doing watch what you're projecting etc so yeah becoming that takes some time takes some work takes some effort and it happens a little bit at a time but eventually it leads to that manifestation that you're talking about first on a personal level and then it begins to show up everywhere around you no me too i agree with both of you i think what you're saying penny is to be receptive i think both you and john are saying be receptive yeah. have your antennas up for what's yeah. what's coming in 
what other impulses or influences or energies. You know, um, people may feel like they're powerless against this this kind of monolithic force across the physical world, but we're not powerless. And yeah, I think you're right, John. It is time for individuals to step up our game and do the work on ourselves, do the work for ourselves. Because if we do it for ourselves, we do it for others. That's the resonant attractor. We can put it out. And I think, you know, we're conditioned to always impose ourselves on the world. And look where that's got it, got us, you know? Like, you you know, you have to do life. But no, don't impose on life now. Now be in receptive mode. I mean, be aware of life, but be receptive and to those instinctual nudges or influences that's coming in. Because I think attunement is a good word to put it. Alignment or attunement now with something, a different energy, a different something that we can feel is coming in. Because if we can resonate with that new attunement, then that will start to, like you say, Penny, kind of rewire us and have effects on us in a subtle way. We may not realize it. Okay. Well, you would just walk down the edge of the need for a vision. And there's somewhere in here where you've got to start to come up with some idea about where you're going or where this could go or what so that it isn't just open-ended and uh yeah. so i i think that you really need uh part of what we're trying to do here at uh, the arlington institute is build a vision for a new world uh, always knowing that it's all subject to change you know who knows what in the world's going to happen but if you don't start thinking about it then you know you haven't thought about it. and so anything you, you're not ready that's right you're tetherless you you create a vision and then you establish a lock-on effect to that yep. vision that's, that's right. right that's right mm -hmm. well mm. thank you thank you both very much interesting conversation uh um uh, uh, we're going to cut this a little close uh short today because greg isn't with us but uh, uh very appreciate uh very much appreciate all of your um, uh wise wise comments we appreciate it <laughs> and for all of those of you who are joining us uh, online we uh very much appreciate you i mean this is it's what keeps this thing going is that uh that the, the kind words and letters and communications that you all send uh telling us that you find this helpful and so you know you do the usual thing you know uh punch the button and like it and and uh what what's the other one S subscribe that's a share subscribe and punch the button because that all helps kind of expand this and give us a few more people that uh not try to follow that follow all of this uh we're coming to you from the arlington institute which is a little think tank that i started 35 years ago and here in the in the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia, Berkeley Springs, our small little resort town, just 100 miles from Washington and Baltimore. And we hold forth with a whole lot of, a whole lot of different programs. You can find the information at arlingtoninstitute.org. One of the things you might be interested in is uh, our monthly speaker series, which features people like Penny Kelly and Greg Braden and others. Um, here in Berkeley Springs, and we live stream it all over the world. And so we've got folks all over that uh, respond to uh, these uh, interesting kind of speakers. We've got uh, Suzanne uh, Giesman coming with us, uh, who used to be a Navy commander and is now a medium and uh, speaking about uh, in, taking us through a workshop on the 17th of, of February, who is going to be very interesting. Uh, and we've got a great group that's already uh, committed to coming to that. They have all, already signed up, and you can find that at transitiontalks.org. So thank you for coming and being with us. We do this every two weeks, and uh, we'll be back in another couple of weeks, and Greg will be with us. So thank you all very much. Thanks to the two of you. Appreciate you being with us always. Good time and enjoyable conversation, and for all of our viewers Thank you very much, and uh, come back and see us. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Have, Have a good night. week, everyone. Thanks.